The totem narrative line has caused Supergirl to mow through intricate plots at speeds normally reserved for soap operas, as shown in episode 18 of Supergirl. Nixley and Lex square up against Supergirl and the Super Friends in their first serious battle in a long time, and the show barely pauses to make place for it. Meanwhile, there's so much totem-related activity going on that Lex's manipulations don't really register as a disclosure, but more as a reminder of what happened in the first place. Even after everyone receives a Lexo suit, Lexley still can't beat the Super Friends, at least not aboard Naxum's ship. While in a vault that looked very similar to the one from the 50th anniversary Doctor Who special, Nixley experienced a surprise moment of emotional clarity. Her emotional excursions have thus far only seemed to bring her closer to Lex, but she remains a rather level-headed villain who has committed to a logical notion, even if the implementation involves a callous disdain for human life. The future Legion attack that results to Nixley's death, as well as MXE's location, are both intriguing mysteries. Brainy's instructions to return to the 31st century and merge with the big brain in order to save it from a pandemic sound a little forced, but returning him to the future adds some genuine stakes to a war that was otherwise going way too nicely for the Super Friends. It's easy to picture a version of this last season that's less densely packed with story pieces that elicit little emotional commitment from the spectator, giving Brainy more breathing room as he prepares to return to the future. The concept of his leaving has been on the back burner for a long time, but in the 21st century, he has formed a family, and isolating him from them, and forcing him to lose his hard-won personality, is a terrific way to show how much he has changed over time. Brainy is the team's beating heart these days, and losing him would be unthinkable. It was a fantastic decision to bring back Brainy's pure logic AI version. It keeps the destiny of Brainy a mystery for a bit longer, while also acting as a harsh reminder of how different our Brainy is from other Kaluans or other incarnations of himself throughout time and space, including the version we met a few seasons ago. As Esme tries to understand out her talents, Kara and Alex have a major disagreement over power dampeners and how to manage them. After what she went through with the corrupt foster mother, it's understandable that Alex would not want to put a damper on Esme's happiness, but Kara makes an important point about Esme's safety and her own experience as an alien that Alex simply cannot replicate, regardless of any other marginalized identities she may hold. It's worth mentioning that Alex was vehemently anti-alien and wanted Kara to hide until the beginning of the episode. As is common with adoptees, her actions and those of their parents influenced Kara's perception of her foreign identity. With his death, the authors were finally able to put William Day to good use. It's all very journalistic and honorable. So there's that. He also got to record Andrea Rojas' ultimate, I told you so, video. Kara is correct in snatching delight when you can, and hopefully she isn't too hard on herself for killing William and kidnapping Esme when she was relaxing for a moment. At the bachelorette party, everyone looked fantastic, especially Alex in her plunging jumpsuit, Mia in gold, and Brainy with suspenders and wonderfully must hair. We've finally arrived at the denouement, with Lex and Nixley snatching Esme for her totemic properties.